Okay, so first of all, you may notice a couple of changes. First of all, there is some blue light down here now to kind of spice up the background a little bit. So I know it's usually like a white torture room. Um, so yeah, just to make things a little more interesting. Also, the camera angle today is different. It's because I'm experimenting in a sort of different way of recording, uh, which if things are a little bit ropey today, do forgive me, but uh, I promise it will get more fluid as I get more used to it. But yes, today we've got information that Tommy Fury will want to fight Logan Paul if he beats Jake Paul on December. 18th. Now, this is something that, uh, you know, it has kind of been uh, toyed around with in the past. This didn't actually come from Tommy Fury. This actually came from John Fury, uh, which is, I mean, interesting. I think I think John Fury has sort of been almost a, 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 a spokesperson for Tommy uh, sometimes. You know, he he, he said a, he said more, actually, about Tommy than Tommy has about himself. And yes, today, in an interview with Rob, that he would plan to go and fight Logan Paul after he beat Jake Paul, which doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, we, we, we've, we've, said this, we've said this from the off, uh, you know, if you beat Jake Paul, and if you're going into a fight with Jake Paul, it does make sense to, if you beat him, go on to a fight with Logan Paul, you know, the money would be similar, if not higher, because, you know, after if you beat Jake Paul, if you're the man to do it, as it were, uh, you know, then there's a pretty good chance you can beat Logan Paul as well, you know, Logan Paul is fantastic uh, in that Floyd Mayweather fight, but... I still think he could be beat, um, you know, and if Tommy, I think, you know, I, I would personally say that uh, Logan Paul is slightly worse than Jake. I think Jake is a lot more polished. I think Jake is uh, it kind of in, in just a more fluid state, as it were. You know, he, he, he's ready, as it were. You know, he, he's been training for longer as well. That's the other thing. You know, whilst Logan has been drinking in the last five months, the last six months even, I mean, he revealed on Impulsive uh, that he, he's also got like a, 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 a drinking addiction now, which is a problem that he's trying to solve. So, yeah, you know, if if Tommy Fury have, has the ability to take down Jake Paul, I think he could easily take on Logan Paul. Uh, and I think John Fury's got the right, you know, I mean, John Fury's got the right mojo here. And I think, uh, you yeah, know, he's suddenly going to be making a lot of money for Tommy uh, if he continues to nurture Tommy's business uh, career and, and fighting career in the way that Tommy wants to have it. But anyway, this is exactly what John Fury said today. If he's on his game, Tommy, and he's firing all four cylinders, easy night's work. Easy money. The winner get, goes on to the bigger and better things. We'll get the brother out of the game as well. Then we'll start looking at conventional titles for him. A brother is going to want to redeem another brother, isn't he? When he knocks that, when he knocks Jake Paul out, the other brother is going to want to take his part, ain't he? But I don't think he. I think I don't think so because the hiding Tommy is going to give Jake Paul. The other brother won't e won't be interested either. Big threats from John Fury. This isn't like small stuff, you know. John Fury is dealing things out here, you know. He, I mean, the threats that are coming from John Fury. Uh, I think he's being, I think he's being very supportive of Tommy. It, it's safe to say that, and he has had big involvement in this fight. Like, I'm personally quite surprised, you know, because all of all of the previous fight, all of the previous opponents of Jake Paul, you know, Tyron Woodley, Ben Askren, uh, Nate Robinson, even Gibb, not many other people got involved other than themselves. But with this, you know, with with taking on Tommy Fury, it's like Jake Paul's taking on the whole Fury family. I mean, he said he, he said when when Tommy dished out a tweet, basically saying that um, you know uh, 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 this is the best camp of my life. I'm getting so much stuff. You know, Tyson Fury is training me very well. Uh, that you know it, it, he was quite surprised at how how many people are getting involved and how much they're throwing his way because usually you know Jake Paul's opponents they hide. You know, they're, they're very reclusive. They they don't actually do a lot. So they just sort of take whatever's thrown at them because it's so childish and then. And they sort of go with it. But Tommy, you know, Tommy, he, he's gone a different route. And I think it's a good route. Because uh, the, the way to deal with Jake Paul, as we've seen in the press conferences and as we've seen in person, the way to deal with Jake Paul is to do what Jake Paul does to you back to Jake Paul. I.e. be as rowdy, be as in your face, be as childish as him. Because then Jake Paul can't really do a lot. Because if you're doing what he does and you can't do anything to that, well, if you give him a taste of his own medicine, he's sort of paralysed. Which I think is what Tommy is, is finding out and what Tommy is exploiting. Now, whether this will change the fight, of course, you know, remains to be seen. Obviously, I don't think it will. Jake Paul's very used to getting criticism, very very used to getting hate. I don't think, you know, some tweets and stuff will change it, and I don't think these threats, you know, for, from, from John Fury and from Tommy Fury uh, are going to really shake him a lot, because, to be quite honest, it, you know, he, real, he realises it's childish, but it's all for publicity. You know, it's all for promoting this fight. It's all for getting eyes on the thing, getting attention. But yeah, when it comes to this Logan Paul fight, 
I, I look, I think this has massive, massive potential. And look, I don't think we'll get a lot more information on this because it's not really uh, a piece of, you know, uh, well, it's not really information as it were. It's just saying, oh, well, if we beat Jake Paul, then we'll move on to Logan Paul, which, you know, make, makes sense on so many levels. So I think if you I think if, if we do get massive upsets uh, on December 18th, you know, and, and Tommy Fury does beat Jake Paul, then I think we could see a Logan Paul fight coming, you know, within the next six months uh, post that fight. Um, but yeah, big information today. John Fury coming in clutch once again, uh, uh, you know, dealing out threats. I mean, this is the thing. I think, I think John Fury is being relatively fair. You know, he, he's being quite real with it uh, by saying, you know, if Tommy uh, loses to Jake Paul, then he, he will retire from boxing. He'll have to change his name to Tommy Fumbles. You know, all of the above, you, you know, you've heard it all before. I mean, Tyson Fury said he'd have to move to a foreign country. Eddie Hearn said he'd have to move to the Sahara Desert. You're getting the picture. You know, there is massive pressure on Tommy Fury, um, which I think I think he's d handling quite well, to be quite honest. I've, I've been personally quite surprised uh, with how well he's been dealing with things because, you know, it's a lot of pressure for a 22-year-old boxer who has only been boxing professionally since December of 2018. Now, all right, you know, he, he has been technically boxing his entire life, but, you know, to be thrown in the deep end like this uh, uh, by people like John Fury, you know, it, it, the, the pressure is a lot for Tommy, and I'm surprised how well he He's taking it, and I'm surprised at uh, the way that he he is dealing with things. And I think I actually think uh, a big help with that is Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, I think, is absolutely going to change this fight. Had Tyson Fury never gone into Tommy's camp, I think the fight would look very different. But for a couple of fundamental reasons, mainly that Tommy, it, it, you know, t the best person that Tommy could have to train him is Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's done all this before. He knows what he's doing. He knows the mental aspect of everything. He knows how to. He knows how to train. He knows what to do. You know, I mean, this is the you know, Tyson Fury is uh, uh, not exactly like chiseled physique, as you could say. Um, you know, that doesn't let, that doesn't stop him at all. Like he could go for 12 rounds easily. You know, I think if he really wanted to, he could probably go for 15. But the thing is, Tyson Fury knows this stuff. He's 11 years older than Tommy. He's the heavyweight champion of the world. He, you know, he's come back from where he was three, four years ago. It's remarkable to see where Tyson Fury is today. And I think to have that guy in your camp, the main guy in your camp, especially if you're his younger brother, you know, Tommy Fury, you couldn't ask for anybody better. And uh, from the training footage we've seen, I'll, I'll throw some up on screen, um, you know, it's fantastic to see uh, how Tyson Fury is influencing Tommy's camp. And I, th I think he will be the absolute game changer. Seriously, you know, uh, T Tommy Tyson Fury will absolutely be the, the gold dust that Tommy will need going into us. And I think, you know, Tyson will be in his corner on December 18th. That was revealed a while ago, uh, once again by John Fury. You know, uh, again, John Fury is having so much, uh, a lot of influence on this fight and revealing a lot of things. But yes, you know, Tyson Fury will be in the corner of Tommy Fury on December 18th. And I do think that will make a massive difference. I think mainly from the mental stuff, mainly from the mental aspect. We know Tyson Fury uh, knows how to deal with the mental health uh, of getting into a boxing ring, of, you know, even redeeming him himself in the in the uh, remarkable and one once in a lifetime way that Tyson redeemed himself you know it came back from where he was four years ago you know I, Ty, Tyson Fury knows how to deal with this stuff and will provide information that is invaluable to Tommy and and, and will really change the game and that's I mean this is the thing I remain on the position it's very 50 50 from this far out it's like 26 or six or something days uh, until the fight goes ahead on December 18th you know it, it's heating up a lot that uh, uh, that's all we can say now with this new information that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tommy Fury will go on to fight Logan Paul, uh, according to John Fury, if he beats uh, uh, Jake Paul on December 18th. Big stuff, and again, just heats everything up. The Sidemen are launching a restaurant chain. That is right. You've probably heard of it by now. It's called Sides, and they released a brand new video today detailing everything about uh, what will come on November 28th when it's finally released in both London and the UAE. Here's the video. Oh, damn.
You know, bad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Harry Potter. <laughs> no, no, Harry Potter. I don't fuck you. So yes, as I said, the Simon are launching a restaurant chain. We got this information uh, a couple of weeks ago that basically, you know, Eat Sides will be their new uh, sort of Beast to Beast Burger style uh, restaurant chain. And we did predict that it would be launching in the UK first, but uh, I was slightly wrong. I, I guess slightly right though, uh, because it, it will be first launching in London and the UAE, which it's, I mean, the UAE is a bit out of the bag, but yes, it will be launching on Deliveroo, uh, Uber Eats, basically all your favourite eating platforms. The site's name was a little bit controversial when it was first revealed to Twitter. A lot of people said that it could have been called uh, Side Eats and it would have flowed better, um, which, you know, it's a fair point. I mean, the name the name is slightly strange. My personal gripe is uh, with the logo. I don't think, I, 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 I personally think they've made so many different companies, uh, there are so many different products now that I think they probably need to come up with a new logo. I mean, uh, you know, two months ago we got we got side plus obviously um which you know is it, now a very popular streaming service and, and for a short time was number one uh, on the app store on the ios app store for downloads i mean over things like netflix and spotify etc um so yes and then you know with this video today they could, I, I guess they're promoting it even more but but it will be available if you live in london or around london or in the uae uh, on november 28th originally but it will expand soon they released an instagram post basically saying that uh, it will expand to other locations soon. I imagine it will expand to the rest of the UK probably, I imagine, by the end of the year. I'd be surprised if it doesn't. Um, but as I say, this has been a, a time of, of great growth for the Sidemen. In, in other departments, you know, they've had Side Plus obviously released in September on September 12th, which is, so far as we can see, uh, has been a massive success and has had really no shortcomings apart from the standard piracy thing. But, um, you know, I made <laughs> several videos on that. But, yeah, so they had Side Plus. Uh, they also had XX Vodka launched last month, which is basically you know for over 18s in the UK, if you, uh, you can buy the the vodka um, in most restaurants and most uh, uh, stores. Uh, so you know, and, and then now of course we we have uh, uh, Eat Sides, which you know this this is what they have on their website currently, but. Um, yeah, it, it's certainly interesting to see how how the, the Simon are sort of following Mr. Beast Burger, the Beast Burger uh, uh, route, I guess. You know, uh, Mr. Beast was working on Beast Burger for about a year before it was released at the start of 2021, and I think the Simon are taking a couple notes. Um, I mean, it, it was interesting because Ethan it recently like uh, revealed on on the Fellas podcast uh, that this was a period where the Simon wanted to establish a brand that would last longer uh, than their content creation journey which makes a lot of sense because you know they're not gonna be content creators forever um, so you know it, it would make sense to keep businesses available that can you know sustain you past your content creation uh, reign I guess you know because it because it's very grueling it's a very grueling lifestyle I mean Ethan was explaining on the podcast that basically you know I can't do things on Sunday I can't do things a lot of days because we have you know we have all the different stuff you know his own channel the side men but increasingly the side men is becoming more of a responsibility than anything else he has because there's so much there you know as I previously mentioned they have all these different things to keep up uh, like you know the well now size obviously um the side plus you know uh, excites vodka etc and he all has to fit that into his weekly and daily schedule which i can you can imagine probably as well is would be a very grueling task um so you know they want to kind of create things that will last longer than they will in terms of their youtube journey um you know and the, and, the, and he did also interestingly predict in that podcast i'll throw it up on screen that uh it, they will be making content for maybe another five years but after then they'll start start to slow down or just stop in general or just change the formats which would make sense so basically for the moment they are focused on setting up infrastructure that will last longer uh, than their youtube careers will and eat sides will be a big proponent of that because you know if they get in the same way mr beast has managed to establish a a, a a restaurant chain that's done very well you know now it's worldwide well in most countries um you know it has uh, thousands of of stores around the world and beast burger has been a massive success if the sidemen can create something similar which i 
I, I don't doubt that they can. You know, it, the, there's no reason why this shouldn't be sustaining them for the years to come, you know. But yes, it's certainly all very interesting to see how the Cybermen are sort of gearing up for the next couple of years, I guess, you know, and, and even post their YouTube careers. In a little bit of a twist today, we've had some interesting news. One of the creators of YouTube, George Kareem, who uh, was one of the three creators who made YouTube, literally made the website. Uh, you may recognise him. He's the author of the iconic video, the first video on YouTube, Me at the Zoo. You know, it's classic. Classic video has over 203 million views and recently he updated the description yes like you know this this almost you could say like artifact you know the first video on YouTube he updated the description in response to YouTube's recent announcement of removing the dislike button you know, you've probably heard of it by now you know YouTube removed the dislike button basically nobody liked it like literally on the actual video that they showed uh, you know of, of announcing the removal of the dislike button it had had 10, I think it had over 100,000 dislikes. You know, the, the ratio was 6% of people liked the video, so 94% of people disliked the video. Everybody is, is in favor, you know, of keeping the dislike button. Everybody likes the dislike button. It, it was a stupid announcement, you know, and basically, you know, it, the creator of YouTube agrees with us. The creator of YouTube changed the description to say this. Watching Matt Koval's announcement uh, about the removal of dislikes, I thought something was off. The spoken words did not match the eyes. The video reminded me of an interview ad of uh, Admiral Jeremiah Denton gave in 1966. I've never seen a less enthusiastic, more reluctant announcement of something that is supposed to be great. Calling the removal of dislikes a good thing for creators cannot be done without conflict by someone holding the title of YouTube Creator Lies On. Uh, we know this because there, there exists not a single YouTube creator who thinks removing the dislikes is a good idea for YouTube or for creators. Why would YouTube make this universally disliked change? There is a reason, but it's not a good one, and not one that is pub that will be publicly disclosed. Instead, there are references to various studies, studies that apparently contradict the common sense of every YouTuber. The ability to easily and quickly identify bad content is an ex essential feature of a user-generated content platform. Why? Because not all user-generated content is good. It can't be. In fact, most of it is not good, and that's okay. The idea was never that all content is good. The idea was, however, that among the flood of content, there are great creators waiting to be exposed. And for that to happen, that the stuff that's not great has to be has to fall by the side as quickly as possible. It, the process works, and there's a name for it, the wisdom of crowds. The process breaks when the platform interferes with it. Then the, the platform in invariably declines. Does YouTube want to become a place where everything is mediocre because nothing can be great if nothing is bad? In business, there's one thing more important than make it better, and that is don't F it up. He... He couldn't have said it more perfectly, you know. The guy is incredibly smart, obviously, for inventing, you know, YouTube itself before it was, before it was taken over, and he was effectively kicked out of the company. Uh, if you haven't somehow not seen the dislike video, I'll, I'll show it up on screen now. Uh, if you have seen it, you can just skip to the next bit. I'll, I'll put a timestamp on screen as to when it restarts. Hey, folks. You may have seen a while back that YouTube announced it was experimenting with making dislike counts private to only the creator of the video. Now, if you're like me, you were surprised by that. I mean, I've always thought seeing the number of dislikes on a video helps us know as viewers if it's a good video or not, if it's a helpful tutorial or not, or if what a creator is, is saying in their video is generally agreed with or not. But unfortunately, research teams at YouTube have found there's this whole other use for disliking a video that I had never experienced as a creator and you may not have either. Apparently, groups of viewers are targeting a video's dislike button to drive up the count, turning it into something like a, a, a game with a visible scoreboard. And it's usually just because they don't like the creator or what they stand for. Basically, that's the gist of the video, you get it. You know, they're removing the dislike button to help creators, and apparently there are targeted dislike attacks going on. Uh, which someone made, this is not my point, I did, this is not something, a, a point that I made, but I saw someone else's video, and they made a fantastic point. These targeted dislike attacks that they talk about, 
they're talking about corporations. You know, they're not talking about the individual creator. Because bearing in mind, like, you know, as Matt Clovel said, who, by the way, what well, was a creator uh, before he became a YouTube creator liaison. Um, he, you know, he said that he hadn't experienced the problem himself. Nobody has experienced this problem, you know, of, of targeted dislike attacks. Like, at the, at the worst, you'll get a couple people that if they don't like you, they'll click on multiple videos and dislike them. But really, you know, like, you just take it in your stride from personal experience you know I'll let, look you know if someone if one of my videos gets a lot of dislikes that needs fantastic feedback that's another reason why it's great you know because I can see okay uh, either I've got something wrong you know information that I'll, they'll correct in the in the bottom of the video uh, you know or people just don't like my opinion or whatever but you know the the dislikes are useful and also by removing the button it removes removes the function unless people use it you know, you know all this but did you know, do you notice how you know uh, one one I guess genre of channels frequently get a lot of dislikes because they do bad stuff? Corporations, when you know Apple rolls out a new product, or for example they're removing the charging brick from from the standard iPhone, you know, and and everybody disliked that decision, you know, for the environment. But you know that we're not going to reduce the price of the iPhone because you know uh, we're going to make our profits. You know, that, the, that that announcement got a lot of dislikes because people did, did, did not like the decision. And basically, it's a bad look for corporations if a, one of their announcement videos gets a lot of dislikes. It's just a bad look. So, a number of them would have said to YouTube, Hello, you know, uh, uh, we, we are a corporation what, whatever. You know, we are worth X billion dollars. Um, so, we want you to remove the dislike button because it's a very bad look on us. That, you know, one of our, one of our, um, uh, our videos got a load of dislikes or all of our videos got a load of dislikes. Uh, people must not like us, or, or at least we can't see. You know, at least we can't we can't tell other people that the public dislikes them. So we're going to go to YouTube. and We're going to say, yeah, guys, remove the dislike button. What do we get? Hey, we get this stupid video. So you know, I mean, this is the thing. when the creator of YouTube. You know, the, the guy, well, one of the creators of YouTube, but a central guy who created it. You know, uh, who uploaded the first YouTube video. You know, if he is saying, bearing in mind he's a very intelligent guy, you can you can clearly see from the announcement he made. If he is saying, like echoing the message that all of us, you know, all YouTubers, audiences don't want this to change, don't want the dislike button to to not show any number, you know, then we we clearly know we're in the right. You know, the, as as he said, uh, I don't know what he called it exactly. The wisdom of crowds. That's what it's called. A very technical term. Um, but yeah. You know, if everybody, if everybody on a video is judging it fairly, you know, and like it was a tutorial or something, and you know, like like you've been in a situation before, if if you clicked on a tutorial and it has a ton of dislikes, you know that okay, probably this isn't the tutorial for me. Probably it's not worth spending my time here, you know, or or even just a regular video. If it has a lot of dislikes, chances are there's something's wrong with it. You know, it, people don't generally, you know, uh, or at least the the majority don't generally dislike a video for the sake of disliking a video. And that's exactly the message uh, that Jordy is echoing here. And uh, and I think I think it, it, it's good, you know, and comforting to know that you know if the creator of YouTube is saying we're right and and is even saying that Matt Koval, you know, who who is who has who was a creator in the past, you know, his channel had over 100,000 subscribers. If he's saying that from a guy he's met in real life, he didn't have the same glimmer in his eyes, he said in his statement, you know, it, it's, a, it's a telltale sign that pretty much uh, this was the wrong decision. We're all right, of course, you know, because because if everybody, if every one of your users on the platform, or YouTubers on the platform, everybody's saying removing the dislike button is a bad thing and you're just going to remove it anyway, well, there's something something going on behind the scenes they're not quite telling you. It's not these targeted dislike attacks that Matt Koval spoke about. It's a, it, it's not, you know, uh, oh, a load of creators, uh, uh, their, their mental health is being negatively affected by dislikes, which for the vast, 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 vast majority of people is not true. Vast majority of creators is not true. There's something going on behind the scenes they're not telling you. That's what he said in his statement, you know, uh, not Matt Coble's, but uh, uh, George, that uh, is what he said in his statement as well, you know, uh, where, uh, God, I'll find it, but um, uh, why would why would YouTube make this universally dislike change, there is a reason, but it's not a good one, and not one that go that's going to be publicly disclosed, exactly, and you know, my, well, not my theory, but the, um, another person's theory, I can't remember who it was, but 
uh, was that it was basically because of corporations, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, most corporate videos get a lot of dislikes because people don't tend to have good outlooks on corporations, you know. So yeah, this is this is it's, it's certainly interesting to see that the creator of YouTube, you know, a, a, the guy who literally uploaded the first video to YouTube agrees with everybody that removing the dislike button is a bad idea and shouldn't be done. Um, and, and this thing, you know, it, it's interesting that he predicts that the decline of YouTube may happen over this. I think that certainly we, we're going to see, you know, less favour in YouTube. I, I think a lot of both creators and audiences don't like a lot of the changes that YouTube rolls out. But I have to say, I think this one will, will make a lot of history, as it were. Because I think this is another inflection point where we can go, you know, okay, YouTube clearly isn't on side of the creators. YouTube clearly isn't on side of audiences. This is the thing, uh, you know, it's not like a creators versus audience thing. It is a creators and audience thing versus YouTube, but YouTube are in the power seat and you can't really do anything about that because th th this is the other thing. This is one of the problems with YouTube. As a creator, there is not no other op option really that's like YouTube. You know, you can say Vimeo or Daily Emotion, but re really, it, you know, you're not, are you going to see PewDiePie or Daily Motion? No. You know, this is, there's no real competitor that will allow the same monetization uh, that YouTube can offer, uh, that will allow the same audience that YouTube can offer, and allow the same ease of use and, and, and smooth running platform that YouTube can offer. And it's a little bit like a chicken and an egg thing. Because if you think about it like this, right, pretend there's this new platform, we'll call it, um, you know, uh, dog, do, uh, Dogify or something. You know, so we have Dogify here, right? Dogify is a new, uh, is a competitor to YouTube, right? You can upload videos uh, and, and audiences can watch it. Trouble is, it's a bit like a chicken and an egg thing. The, in order for the audience to go over to Dogify over YouTube, there has to be a creator that they like. But in order for the creator to move over, there has to be an audience there. Because why upload to somewhere where there's no audience? It just doesn't make sense. So it's like, who will make the first move? And really, nobody else will. I mean, there is a bit of a strategy that you could employ if you were Dogify, but it would it would uh, yeah, you need tens of millions of dollars, and would probably require a similar like Spotify podcast move of bringing over some of the largest creators to Dogify in order to move the audience. But that would take possibly hundreds of millions of dollars. And the other thing is, running a stream a, a video hosting service is incredibly expensive. Yeah, it it, it is quite remarkable that. You can upload video to YouTube and they will host it for you. Um, but the, the problem is, when they have a monopoly, you know, they do decisions like this. Uh, where, where, where they remove the dislike button against everybody's will. And you can't really do a thing about it. You know, you can dislike the video as much as you want. Uh, it was, well, but, you know, but you can't even see it anymore. And also someone posted, I think Marcus Brownlee posted an interesting uh, tweet saying, yeah, about YouTube Rewind 2018 that got 19 million dislikes. Uh, basically posting a tweet that said, oh, wow, YouTube Rewind 2018 got 3 million likes. I think everybody loved the thing. It's just an example that yeah, YouTube are in their power seat, you can't really do anything about it and they will do what they want. They will pander to corporations, they will pander to everybody that's not the creator and everybody who's not, who, 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 you know, who's not an audience basically. Both audiences and creators are on the same side. Uh, the, the creator of YouTube is also on our side, you know. And, and at this point, we can pretty conclusively say removing the dislike button was certainly the wrong decision because, as George said in his statement, uh, the, the wisdom of crowds it holds true that, you know, if everybody's saying removing the dislike button's bad, then it's bad. Anyway, it's a sad, it's a sad situation, of course, you know, nobody wants this, uh, I don't want it personally, nobody, no other creator, no other audience wants it, nobody wants this thing, you should be going to do it anyway. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, I'm recording in some in a different way than I usually do, so bear with me for the moment because I am getting a bit used to it. Basically, it involves throwing up the pictures and videos on screen live, so that's why you might hear me tapping my keyboard and stuff because it's throwing stuff up. Uh, I'm getting used to it, so bear with me for a little bit, but I will get better at it and it will become more seamless. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Discord! Get on the Discord! We need more members. We have about 30 members, but we, we, we're we talking all day. It's a wonderful time. Whatever you want to talk about, Deji, uh, uh, you know, new training footage, Tommy Fury, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, Tyson Fury, John Fury, anybody, any anything, any anybody at all, go 
click that that Discord link. It's the first link in the oh no. To share with the you first link in the description. Go join it. Anyway, uh, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Had a haircut today. I'm not super happy about it. I did think about wearing a hat, wearing a hat, wearing a hat. I've had a haircut today. I'm not super happy about it. I did think about wearing a hat, wearing a hat, wearing a hat. I've had a haircut today. I'm not super happy about it. I did think.